of Magaville. <laughs> Magaville, baby. Magaville. Magaville. Oh, Magaville. What's up, man? Thanks for coming back. It's been a while. Yeah, I've seen you guys in Elevated and Blown Up. Yeah, same with you, bro. Congrats on all your success lately. Appreciate it, appreciate it. You've been, uh, especially that Vice article. That was hilarious. <laughs> How did one, that? recent one? Yeah, that Vice article just came out like last month, didn't it? Yeah, they said the mayor of Magaville is a white rapper. You know, they had, <laughs> did, to, you know, they had, they had to put to the white on. You know I mean? Did they tell you before they did that that they were going to shit on you in the whole article? or did No, nah, but I do knew? think the article for them coming already known that they were going to write something super negative being, you know, left. Um, they did pretty good, I felt. They twisted a couple things around that I didn't really like, but, you know, it's media. You're going to get what you get, so yeah. it's a pretty big publication, so I wasn't really tripping on it, but they kind of already come out, and you could tell from just being around someone who doesn't really represent the same things you represent or feel the same way you feel. Yeah. You can get that vibe. You know, we're in the mm -hmm. studio making these songs. I can see, like, somebody rolling their eyes and being like, yeah, you know? yeah. How many songs are you making a week? Like, what are you, what are you doing like right now as far as like your daily kind of schedule? Are you just re recording music every day? Or well, yeah, I just kind of like you know in this lane you really got to watch the news, you know. What watch I mean? the and really news. Really kind of find out what's going on in the world. Uh, what do you watch? Well, I watch CNN just to hear what they're talking about. Watch some Fox News. Watch a lot of podcasts. You know what I'm saying? Watch. Yeah. You guys got to stay hip to what's going on. Yeah. Um, because. It's a trendy lane, so the music has to be trendy a little bit. You know, you got to kind of pay attention to what's going on. But I'm recording pretty much every night. I record songs every day, sometimes 10 a day, 20 a day. Yeah. I mean, I record a lot of music. Last year, I dropped 10 albums. You are, like, one of the few, like, you just mentioned that there's a bunch of them, but one of the few, like, hyper-political rappers. Yeah. Like, a lot of people, especially hip-hop fans, they're not really into fucking politics. You know nah, what I mean? they're afraid. Yeah, they're afraid to be or open. Or they're with not it. independent. See, everybody's fake independent. Afraid, or like they don't like like me. Like I, I fucking hate politics. Like yeah. I don't. It's so hard to understand it. There's so well, many. There things. are certain people that don't are afraid to get attached to it and lose the fans or lose what they got. Yeah, you know what I mean. Right, like a lot of people are afraid to protect their brand. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. And some people like me, it's just <clears throat> I built my brand, including this. You know. Was there ever a time in the beginning where you were scared for that? No, nah, I wasn't scared because just I'm this kind of person that's going to stand on what I believe in no matter what. Just be who so, you are. So um, I was rocking with Trump in the very beginning of 2016. I had the very first pro-Trump song. Um, people said, oh, it's career suicide. I did a video of Rick Ross after that. Scoot that thing in a little bit closer. Recently just, just did a, move it. Recently just did a video with Kodak Black. You know what I'm saying? Um, Hell yeah. People can't tell you what you're going to do or your outcome is going to be. You just got to get in there and make a shake. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. At what point did you decide to, like, kind of rebrand your persona, like, around Trump? Well, it was kind of like... In and 20, how did you come up with that? In 2016, I came out as, like, you know, Trump's nephew. That was, like, you yeah. know, the first video we did. Mm -hmm. Came in on a helicopter with Trump in the ground. It's just the way you give it to people is crazy, you know what I mean? So, most times on social media, if you see a post... That would be on a blog site. You know, you're paying for blog posts and shout outs to build your brand. It would usually like at your name. So the second time around when I put out Silver Spoon compared to my, all my different releases, I said, don't tag my name. Like, make this look like you're just going to shit on me. Like, make this look like that you want to share this and you're cracking the case and you got information nobody got. Donald Trump has a nephew with face tattoos <laughs> that raps. Check this out. This is crazy. And when it's read like that without being tagged, People got to really dig into it because they're like, well, this isn't a sponsored post. Yeah, this is some real stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, you know, I flipped the game on them, got it out there. But at first it was with Trump was I felt like I was a Donald Trump a rep. You know, everybody was supporting me. Everybody was rocking with me. Everybody saw the big features. They saw the lifestyle, um, but they didn't want to give my flowers. Um, I felt like Trump. Everybody loved Trump. Everybody was down with Trump. Uh, every rapper was rapping like they're a boss like Trump, getting money like Trump, yeah. going to his hotels, watching the boxing matches. Everybody was a big fan of Trump. Yeah. Then he said he's going to be the president, and everybody laughed. Said that would never happen. Yeah. Then he became the president, and then everybody started hating on Trump. I hate Trump. He's racist. He's this. Trump's did more for the black African-American uh, African -American community than any president ever has. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Trump said it's all types of stuff for the minorities. He's did all types of stuff for all types of people. And, you know, people loved him at one time, and then when he got his shine you know they hated him so i felt like that and rap with me then as i really started getting into the music in 2016 and really learning about you know the political aspect of it i realized like they just don't the government is not going to ever tell you something you're supposed to know you know like mm -hmm. we pay for you know people getting cancer treatment diabetic treatment but a vaccine's free mm -hmm. if a vaccine was really going to save you it wouldn't be free it would cost money 
Right. You know what I mean? The stuff that they kick us isn't true to me. And I've always been someone to just, you know, found my own way. So I scheduled a lot of things around Trump. People love Trump. Trump's a winner. I'm a winner. I'm a hustler. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a businessman. So there's By the way, I, better. Pres- I appreciate you taking the vaccine before you came in. To I did. They said <laughs> yeah. I had to get the vaccine, yeah. man. I got that fake vaccine card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're giving them out a time Trudeau's, out next door. Trudeau's people over in Canada send them over to me. So <laughs> When did you get that Rolls Royce? I had a couple Wait, of Is Rolls. that a phantom or is that a ghost? That's a ghost. A ghost, okay. Rapper with a Richie Rich with Trump's nephew on the front. Okay. Um, you know, I got the big Trump truck. Yeah. Got a couple cars, man. But at the end of the day, is like... All my stuff's branding. You know what yeah, I mean? I brand everything definitely. I got. It's all a business. A lot of people these days just make excuses why they can't win. You know, I got all the way to, you know, linking with Trump, being on stage around him, flicking it up, taking photos, getting support from all these people. I got face tattoos. You know what I mean? I don't look like the normal Republican to them. Yeah. They let me in. If they were so judgmental, why am I going to get in? Mm-hmm. You think rap music is what did it for me? They probably don't listen to rap music. Mm-hmm. So one thing I really did is I turned... My fan base and the 40 and 60 year older people at Mar Largo riding yeah. around bumping for Giada <laughs> Blue. You know what I mean? But I cleaned a lot of things up too because at one time I didn't realize how many children listened to me. That was kind of the thing with Vice. They made it seem like, um, you know, Blow had no success in his early rap career. Well, I mean, I got songs with Rick Ross before that, Paul Wall before that, yep. Vanilla Ice before that, Lil Dirk before that, millions of views, <laughs> videos in the mil- I mean, that's success. Radio stations playing my music, mm-hmm. you know, but that was like my thing with Trump. They're not giving me my flowers, so I'm going to make my own lane, my own genre. And people said it was career suicide. Now there's two, 300 people doing the same thing, trying to do what I was doing. Yeah. You know, another big name, Bryson Gray. You know, he was somebody who really did his thing. He had some really big songs. We came together and um, kind of like took off from there with the music. And it's like, you just got to stay up to date. My thing is, I'm in the streets with the Patriots, like the people. Anytime you see a blow video, there's hundreds of people in the video. These aren't paid actors. These are Patriots that feel the same way I feel. They respect what I'm doing. That's why I'm the mayor of Magaville. I say, hey, I'm doing a video tomorrow. They ran a shine. They're out there with me. And that's the difference. Before, everybody was just trying to come to a video and get something at it. They were a rapper, too. They wanted mm-hmm. to rap. Mm-hmm. These are just everyday people, not even the wealthiest people in the world. They're spending their last $20, $30 on a T-shirt for me and a hat to be in my video. So I got a lot of love, and I respect them for what they're standing for. Because, you know, no matter what about the money, the, Trump isn't paying these people. And right. The elections passed a year and a half ago, and people are still out here. His rallies are popping. Still Trump's still popping. <laughs> yeah, he's still the president. We don't see 46. It's just it's not real. How much uh, censorship are you dealing with on social media? The censorship is beyond crazy. Um, one thing is, like, I never realized how bad censorship was until you're censored. So sometimes you just hear people say, like, I'm getting shadow banned and censored, and you're like, you just ain't popping. Or, you know, you ain't grinding hard enough, or you just think you're better than you are. Well, when they just delete 250,000 followers without an email or a reason and you're to pay Instagram's wiped, then you're like, huh, well, maybe I'll hit somebody up when nobody knows you existed. I got a verified page, not to mention I'm spending 30,000 or 40,000 at that time a year in ads on Facebook and Instagram. You're so, spending that much on ads on, on Instagram? Ads. Like, so I'd put out a picture or a post. So anytime I put a picture up, I throw 500 to $1,000 on that post just to get it going. Get Got to let people see it. Wow. So, not saying that's a lot of money at the end of the year, but imagine if you deleted oh, that's a lot of money. <laughs> you deleted, you know, a couple hundred thousand people that were spending forty grand a month with you. I mean a year. So I was spending, you know, getting my brand built doing that with the Forge Out of Blow. And um, that's what I was doing, like the float parties and I was doing like, you know, I had the crazy hair styles and the shows, just getting that attention. So then they banned me from that, took my Facebook down from me. Then a year to date, I'm ten Instagrams already gone. So it's like someone working on Instagram to sees me building my page. Whenever it gets to about 10,000, wipe it. Why do they wipe it? They tell you? No, they don't give me no emails or nothing. I literally just paid someone $7,000 a day in London that I have no clue who they are. <laughs> Ask my boy, Tony. <laughs> I just went to the bank and sent someone $7,000 a day to try to get one of my Instagrams back. Really? That's how bad I need my pages back. Because at the end of the day, I'm independent. I don't have a label. I do this all myself. So every follower that I get is a fan, a supporter, Someone that's helped support my dream, my my business. Once you take that from me, people get tired of trying to find you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then not everybody's mm-hmm. always on social media looking for you. So once you're gone, you just they try to get you gone. So I've stayed relevant. My numbers have gotten mm-hmm. bigger without my social media. So sometimes being banned 
helped a little bit because you might see my video come across a timeline and say, well, you know what? I'm going to share Bo's video now because I know he's deleted mm -hmm. and help him out a little bit. Um, and the problem is when you get deleted, we all know people in your own camps or do the same lane you're in. They enjoy that. So not everybody's like, oh, Concrete got deleted. Let's go share their <laughs> page. They're like, they're deleted. It's time for us to do our thing. Yeah, right. Take so they, over that spot. Because they, they feel like you're competition. A little what? bit. There's yeah. competition and everything. So it's very good. And the only person really that shots me out, my boy Bryson Gray and my brother Stoney, J360. But I'm saying a lot of other people, when I get deleted, I'll even hit them up. Like, yo, I'll throw you some money to get, <clears throat> get me a post to let people know where I'm my new page. And they'd be like, oh, I doesn't need any money. and Or they'll be afraid to share you because, oh, you got deleted. So you're going to get me deleted. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. It just becomes hard getting censored. Um, it's hard to build your brand. It's hard to keep any business going. I mean, imagine having a McDonald's and paint it black and blue and with no arch in the front. <laughs> yeah. And then people know that's McDonald's. Yeah. You know, or like people say, like, why do you still got to run ads and commercials on social media if you're already famous and popping? Well, there's a McDonald's and Chick-fil-A ads every day on TV. It's about keeping it in their face. Mm -hmm. So the censorship really hurts. What about Twitter and YouTube? Do you got you got, have you ever had Twitter or you? I mean, I know, obviously you have YouTube. But what about I never Twitter? I never been big into Twitter. No. I have a Twitter. It just does it get fucked with. I don't even put on it, man. Just no. the, the outlook of the. I like Instagram. I <laughs> like seeing the videos. I like going through. But then Instagram made it so hard. It's like you can't see what likes people got anymore. Yeah. Well, they did that because you know people were just capping on all their stuff, buying all these fake likes, buying all these fake followers. Mm -hmm. Um, just a bunch of robots. You know what I mean? Um, but Twitter. I post on there, and it's just like I just post like a status. It's like I don't really get to see much of anything. I didn't like it like that. Um, True Social is pretty big now. I'm not, sh not sure if oh, you guys yeah, are Truth. on there. I'm at like 25,000 on True Social in two weeks. My page. Really? Yeah, Trump and them made it. They verified me ASAP, so I was one of the early people on there. So that was cool. you know. So pretty soon when that opens up to everybody, every Democrat and their mom's going to be on there too because they want to be where it's popping. They want to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a million troll Trump pages yeah. or troll 4 g auto plays. Like if you go on TikTok. I got like 250,000 followers on TikTok. And if you type in my name, 4G Auto Blue, there's over 150 pages. No way. And I'm just buried in those pages. You're buried under all the fake pages. Yeah, because people just warn my posts. So anytime I post something, it gets warned, 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 warned. Account violation, take down. One more account violation, you're deleted. Mm -hmm. They don't have somebody physically mm -hmm. sitting there saying, well, no, this isn't bad. It's just you warn it enough, they'll take That's it down. That's it. Mm -hmm. It's over in China. Yeah. So you just know it when Forge out a blow post, let's all ban his shit and it's going to come right down. Ha ha ha. It's funny to them, but it's frustrating to me because yeah. I'm like, dang, I just got this post I, on TikTok. I think if you search my name, it's like 45 million views right on my, and on my page. Mm. I have tons of videos in the millions. So you get a million views and just people warning, get it taken down. It's not fair. Yeah. I feel that people, you know, you got rappers these days. Like, you know, I made degenerate music sometimes in my life. You know, about drugs, cars, money, lifestyle, female, whatever. It never got banned, never got censored. They didn't yeah. care. I rap about, you know, voter integrity and a vaccine. It's like, whoa, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Get it out hold of up. here. Get it out of here. But 6 9 I like 6 9 but he's like the, a genius to me on social media, right? Really? But he, I mean, he'll literally say, like, pull up here. I'm going to California. I don't care what's up. Like, did he get away with that on social media? That's like... Almost telling the like baiting people to come kill yeah. you, and everybody and their mom is putting up gang signs and guns. Social media, every woman in the world on there have is half naked, mm -hmm. promoting their brand. Like that's fine, but if you just put up a American flag and a couple of the bros, it's like, whoa, oh my God, you know this is a cult. This needs yeah. to come down. They didn't care about uh, fight comps. Remember all the <clears throat> fight comps? Yeah, they I mean they're straight a, up porn on Twitter. Yeah, but like fight comps, they don't care about. Let's talk about Portland. They're so worried about January. <clears throat> like Portland went on for three months. They had them burnt in Portland all the way to the ground. They're not circling back, arresting anybody. They're at the Capitol, which is our building, trying to lock up everybody and their mom who was even posted about the Capitol. Did you go to the uh, January, January 6th, 6th riot? Yeah. You, nah, you were there. there. The riot was no riot, I'm telling you. Everybody <clears throat> there was happy. Doing a, I, It was not what the people try to put on TV. Really? But I was booked, so I was there. I had a show there, me and Bryson Gray performing so like i wasn't in the capitol but i was there performing you were in you were in dc dc where'd yeah. you perform so mm -hmm. right on the main street right outside the white house there's a i'll send you the video you can attach it oh here. yeah i think i sent Probably you the about a hundred thousand people of us out there really going yeah, crazy to our music 
When we got a real fan base, man, we pop out. That's the biggest thing is being yeah. with the people. Uh, it's a blessing that I have 10,000 fans that day that kept me taking pictures and just wandering somewhere. I feel like that day was like a field trip. Like people go on a field trip, they're a really good mm -hmm. kid, and they just get caught with all the bad kids. Mm -hmm. Maybe do something stupid, and they're like, oh, wow, well, uh, that's not really my character. I mean, they let them go inside the building. You know what I mean? People went inside yeah. the building. Um, Ashley Babbitt, you know what I'm saying, RIP Ashley Babbitt, her fa her mom actually calls me all the time and tells me, hey, thank you so much for keeping my uh, daughter's name Who alive. is she? Ashley Babbitt, she passed away. She was a veteran that was there. She got shot. She's she the girl who got shot. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> wow. But the thing is, you don't hear her name. You hear George Floyd's name. Right. Not saying you shouldn't hear his name, but he wasn't the, he has charges and all types of problems that he was in. Yeah. You know what I mean? End of the day, is like, Ashley Babbitt was there supporting the country, supporting the president. Wrong place, wrong time. Boom. You know what I mean? It wasn't like she had a weapon on her and she was going inside of a building. I just feel like... Was she unarmed? Mm -hmm. I just feel like things are like you know blown <clears throat> to the proportion of how CNN is still talking about that. I mean, there was literally hospitals, dealerships, fire stations, gas stations, pharmacies, boutiques, locals, people that might have been... You know, pro BLMs, their own businesses getting burnt down. Mm -hmm. I've seen people that own their own restaurants. Like, they went through and just destroyed it. You know what I mean? And there's not a, there's not an arrestee. There's never nobody getting in trouble for that. They don't even talk about it. Right. They're like, they're allowed to do that. Then BLM comes out now. Most of that money that was donated, <laughs> how many right. black people got paid? How many black people became millionaires? How many people did they bail out? None. That money went to white people and a few chosen black people that were involved in it and made millions of dollars on that. Yeah. How many people, what was it, like a group, a small group of people <clears throat> who made like well, millions of dollars? Well, one time if you like went to blacklivesmatter.com, you know, to the thing, they went to uh, Sleepy Joe's campaign. Right, 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 right. They did. They had to find mm -hmm. a way. Trump's got support. We got to raise some money. But there were a couple of people that made millions of dollars off millions. that, weren't there? They're, they just yeah. came out. She was paying, yeah, um, was I don't know her name, but family she members. paid she like her ex-husband or something, like two million, some people, a couple to be million. security. And yeah, but I mean, that's not really on the news. It's talked about, but it's like, it's forgivable. Imagine if Trump mm -hmm. had that. Just imagine if Trump said, you don't vote for me, you ain't black. <laughs> just imagine if Trump had that on a t-shirt. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Didn't even say it. Yeah. You know, just imagine if Trump was at a, a KKK eulogies like Joe Biden was. Just imagine if Trump's kids had a laptop. Yeah. Just imagine. You know what I mean? And the funny thing is everybody that like the, the vote for Trump to go against him and vote Joe Biden was just like a fuck Trump vote. Like it was funny. Like, you know, people get so mad. We had these songs. I mean, Nipsey Hustle, RIP. I respect Nipsey to the fullest because I'm independent artist and like. I did the whole albums for a hundred dollars each. Like I see the grind, I see the build up. But him and YG's biggest song was "Fuck Donald Trump." Mm. But we can't make a pro Trump song, and it's like uh, that's their biggest selling song. YG is I don't think has, has a song bigger than "Fuck Donald Trump." When did he release that? Mm, I think that probably came out like right before the election. Oh really? Yeah. So I mean that's their biggest song, you know what I mean? But that whole culture of people now, I go on like <laughs> say cheese and different blog sites. They're all like, damn, where's Trump at? Biden ain't did a damn thing. Yeah, yeah. Trump's kind of like in a good light right now. Great light. That's why I tell people when he comes back in 2024, it's going to be the biggest ride of his life because he's already got his Republican support that he got, his day one loyal fan base that he got. Then everyone who really wasn't rocking with him is going to be like, you know, that's going to be the new silent majority that they said we were. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of silent people that are like, I'm rocking, I'm going to vote Trump. I'm not yeah. voting Joe Biden again. No way. And Joe's the biggest puppet they got. They can't put nobody else in there right now that's going to be bigger than Joe Biden as a puppet. Like, look at this gas price. People in Cali spending $9, $10 on gas. Mm -hmm. This gas is already bought. This ain't, we didn't buy it last week. We already had this gas. Why are we buying this? Why are we paying this much for gas we bought? Well, are we getting Trump's gas from gas. Venezuela? I thought we as a homegrown most of the gas. I thought we were getting it from Venezuela. Well, if we are, it's not brand new gas. <clears throat> You're not getting gas today they brought in last week. We're not? Nope. This is pre-owned gas. Huh. This is still Trump's gas. We have enough gas to make it. Trump gas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just saying this is still Trump's gas. We're not going next door right now and saying, yo, we need gas. We're bringing it in next week from other countries. Mm -hmm. This gas has been here. Well, and Trump was no one of the biggest people that was, uh, that was pushing against that whole pipeline uh, of all the EU countries getting gas from Russia, or getting oil, from, you know, gas and oil <clears> from Russia. Well, Trump's was, biggest thing is to make money here. Right, exactly. Give us jobs. Right. right now, our biggest problem is not a lot of people want to work because Joe Biden was just giving them money. See, a lot of people will get tricked into the system. They want to say, oh, I could get $300 and not work. 
I'll just do that. Instead of getting a job, busting their ass and making $1,800 or $1,500 or $600. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They trick you to want to stay in that little system. One of my best friends, African-American, mixed a Spanish dude, um, he was always around me, had nice things. And he, at one time, you know, he wasn't doing that good. And I watched him work from, like, you know, Wendy's and having a bunch of different jobs. And he lived in a community where, you know, they couldn't make so much money, his mom. And he came to me and said, yo, I got to quit my other job because my mom told me it's making too much money in the house and we're going to lose this housing. I said, cool, you need to move out of that housing and go get your own place, get you another job. And now he owns his own house, works for UPS. He's a driver, got cars he wants. But it just takes someone to say, you could do it. Right. Go do it. You could get out there and do it. Yeah. Not everybody has that thing like me where I say I could do it myself and believe it. That's a gift and a curse. But I believe myself and I say, hey, you can do it. Some people need someone to say, what, you know, you want to do a podcast? I'm going to go buy you a microphone for $300. See if you actually sit there and build a table and Mm -hmm. see if you even make a YouTube channel. It's free. Yeah. Yeah. See if you even make a channel. Sometimes people want to do all this stuff, but they're so afraid to even make the channel or do a a podcast. Mm -hmm. But A lot of people would say to you, it's easy for you to say you got a rich family. They would say that to this day. I haven't got one rich cent from no rich families. You got no money from no your, money your grandparents? From, never got money from really? my family. Really? Never got money from my family, ever. I bought all my own stuff that's, myself. That's fucking crazy, But at the end of the day, is like if I tell somebody that, so I'm blue in the face, they don't care. They don't want to hear it. Yeah. So that's why I came out with the silver spoon. I got it, da 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 Because people want to hear what they want to hear. Mm-hmm. Tell the story about that for people who don't know about it. The, so the auto the trader story, stuff? The, yeah. The well, my grandfather started auto trader on um, the car magazine. I got sent to boarding school when I was in fifth grade. Um, you know, by the way, they didn't, they didn't mention that once in the vice article. I don't think, well, they, they, they said a little something in there about, um, that I kind of like, you know, have my family that, you know, my grandfather sold Uh, auto trader made a lot of money. But the difference is about that is anybody whose family who's watching this has real money. They don't only want nobody else being as rich as them or powerful as them. It's just kind of like anything in the world. So with me, I went my own route, did my own way, got my own tattoos, built my own brand. Now, that's not to say one day when, you know, my mother's still alive, you know, I wouldn't want my mom to ever pass away for me to make any money, you know what I'm saying? Um, but my mom's goal is not to just give me her money. Like, my mom had to work hard in her life, and she got money when my grandfather died. She was left property. So if somebody leaves you a lot of property, it hasn't been taken care of, well, then, first of all, you got to pay the inheritance tax. It's a fire sale on that property. So your property might be worth $10 million, but they know you can't afford to keep that property. Mm-hmm. So we'll give you $2.5 million. Then you got to pay taxes, and that's through the roof right now. So my biggest thing was I went to Admiral Fairgood Academy. It was a military private school. Went there in fifth grade. I lived in that school until I was a senior. So I wasn't at home eating lollipops like everybody wants to say. Mm-hmm. I was living in a military dorm boarding school. Now, the military wasn't the, the toughest aspect of it. We just marched around little rifles. It wasn't like we really did push-ups mm-hmm. and sit-ups and all this stuff all day. And um, But one thing Fairgood did teach me, is to be a people person. Like I could talk to any kind of person. You had kids from all over the world there, all different races. You know, it was it taught you that, like a, a melting pot of people. Um, I never held nothing against my parents sending me there. You know, it was cool. Like I liked living with my friends anyways. Um, but fifth grade's kind of young to leave your family behind and not go see your family anymore. Um, I never really went home for holidays. You know what I'm saying? I've always been kind of distant. Now I have a good relationship with my mom when I'm older. Um, I think it's because I always wanted to do what I, the way I wanted to do it, and not everybody's going to see that. Not everybody's going to see your vision. Sometimes you got to make your own vision, and people see it in the long run. And I'm glad nobody gave me any money because I wouldn't be where I was today. I would have got some money and blown it. I don't do no drugs. I don't drink. I don't do none of this stuff. I'm just a businessman that works hard at everything that I do. And if somebody would have gave me an easy ticket, I probably would be the man I am right now. I wouldn't be. Yeah. I'd rather work for mine. I bought. It feels good to have a Rolls Royce for I got inheritance. Feels good to have more than one Rolls Royce for I got inheritance. Feels good to have big Trump trucks. Feels good to be able to. You got multiple Rolls Royces? Yeah. Feels good to give people, you know, my team pay for their music videos, help help their stuff come together. It feels good to be able to work for different people and just say, hey, you know what? I'm going to put some money into you and this is what you want to do. I believe in you. I got to do to people. Feels good to take care of, you know, parents coming to me all the time saying, hey, my kid's a huge supporter of you. And I'm glad that you don't curse like that in your music anymore. And I'm glad that you got a, a positive message from my children you know I, I kid was getting bullied here at seminal right here in middle school i picked him up in the trump truck they were getting bullied because hmm. they like trump so i came and picked him up in the trump truck 
All the kids saw the truck. Thought a it was middle schooler was getting bullied because he yeah, likes Trump. Right here, she was a female. Um, mm-hmm. I went and picked them up. Um, this is a lot of stuff I do for people. You know, just this little small things that um, I don't need no flowers or no rewards for them. It's stuff I do because I want to do it. Not a lot of people did it for me when I was younger. So my thing is now, if I see someone really wants to do something, okay, if you want to rap, you want my homeboys. I'm not going to give you 20 bands to rap with, but I'll buy you a thousand of your CDs and pay for your video and see how hard you want to work. Mm-hmm. Let's we'll see if you really want to do what I'm doing. You know what I mean? You got to understand this is more marketing and advertisement than just being a great artist. You got to have a brand. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're definitely a good marketer. That's I, one thing for I sure. I did crazy things with the marketing. You know, I was hanging billboards up. You know what I mean? Merchandise. Mm-hmm. This is the way I just do my things different. So like if I hang a billboard up that cost me $8,000, People would say, oh, wow, so I spent 8000 on a billboard. Well, the next billboard, I might cut it in half and charge five companies 5000 each. That's 25000 I made 17000 on my second billboard. Mm-hmm. Then I keep throwing billboards up. If I make a merchandise T-shirt like they used to do in the back of the day and put all the sponsors on the back of it, seven fifty to $1,000, I print a shirt up. I used to think about how I'm going to make this shirt make me $10,000 in sales. I just sold 10000 in advertisement on that shirt before it even hit the streets. Yeah, you got crazy merch, too. Just, you know, Are you just selling like, a shitload of merch? Yeah, merch goes good, you know what I'm saying? Just like with my music. So if I sell my CDs for $10, <clears> I won't sign an autograph for less than another $10. So I sell my album for $20. All my albums sold for $20. All my fans support me. They buy the album. I double my income and my net worth writing my name. How did you connect with Rick Ross? Rick Ross? I've always been a fan of Rick Ross. Um, How I did kinda, you like initially get yeah, a hold of Yeah, I'm going to tell him. you. So Rick Ross has always been my idol. And the biggest thing is when I finally got to meet Ross and do the song, like the worst thing I've realized in this music industry or any industry is like meeting your idols with their capes off. That's why when I met Trump, I was like, please be who I think you are. Because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm going to war for you out here. Yeah. So when I met Rick Ross, you know, for the years I was making these songs, uh, you know, like they were comparing me to white Rick Ross. I made a song called Rick Ross. And people were like, oh, you're cloud chasing, bro. You've been on Ross for like four or five years. He ain't going to rock with you. And I just kept getting on Instagram, and I used to inbox it to everybody and say, yo, tag Rich Forever, tag Rich Forever, tag Rich Forever. They might not like it or see it, but if 500 people tag you, no matter how famous you are, you're going to see it. Mm -hmm. So I just kept doing that for years and years and years. Then I started doing some features with people close to him, my young breed, and artists that he had that were like his homeboys around him. Take him over here to Florida, put him on the yacht, shoot a dope video, give him a real great look, almost better than the look they were getting with the labels. So I would get his attention through that. Then Ross started um, doing the checkers and the wing stops. So I started pulling up to, like, driving to Miami. Ross would be on Snapchat and say, yo, tomorrow I'm opening up this uh, checkers here. Boom, 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 here's the address, pull up. Well, a lot of people don't think that's saying pull up and get a record deal. Pull up. They want to pull up when it's benefit for them, not for him. So I knew I'm going to support you. So I just kept going to those, and then we ended up started chopping it up. Then I said I got a song called Vanilla Sprite with Vanilla Ice. I'd like to get you on it. So he gave me his people's number. I sent him the song. I was, you know, one time people were saying, like, you know, we were going to do a deal. We were going to sign. And then I got everything done before that. So I was like, I'm going to stay independent. So I put the song out. Even like Vanilla Ice. At one time, people don't understand how I met Vanilla Ice. Like Vanilla Ice, I waited at airports for him to get off airplanes. That's how I met Vanilla Ice. You waited at the airport. How did you know he was landing on the way there? RIP, my boy, Guy. But my boy Guy used to do some like TMZ type thing where and then oh, autographs. Yeah, told me this. So like what he would do, he was there the day we all met. He yep, died recently. Yep. He just really? died. Really? Yeah. yeah. He was in the first video out there with us in the back of the car, remember? With all the tattoos yep. on his back, big guy. Mm-hmm. Um he would meet everybody that was He's famous. the dude who rode with us. Rode with us there. He's passed away. He died like six months ago. Crazy. Fuck, that sucks. So uh, one of my great friends. But um he would do getting autographs. So like companies would pay for his autographs. So he would get out there. They would say, okay, hey, this person's going here and go there this week and try to get what you can get, and they cash it out. So he got real good with all the people. So he used to always give Vanilla Ice his autographs, and he'd be like, Vanilla Ice usually does a show on Saturday night, Friday night. Vanilla Ice is crazy popular. You know what I'm saying? People, if they don't realize it, they need to. Like, Ice Ice Baby is the number one rap selling yeah. song in the world ever. You know what I mean? He's constantly doing shows nonstop. So my boy was like, yo, we go to West Palm Airport. Vanilla Ice flies in every Sunday. And I used to always be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, bro, every Sunday. So I went there one Sunday, saw him, said, what's up? Went there the next Sunday and was like, yo, Vanilla Ice came to me and said, look, man, I respect your grind. Here's a list of all my dates on my tour. Anyone you at, you can perform with me. 
I never did this before. But no anyone shit. you show up to, <laughs> I'm going to let you rock the stage with me. Like Y'all went with me to the show. And when we got there, even in that first video, I was still figuring out, okay, camera's on, camera's off. All right, we talked to him. Because it wasn't the relationship wasn't even fully built then. It was just nobody gave me an opportunity like this. I'm going to give it to you because mm-hmm. you earned it. Right. And that was before the whole, like, Trump thing took off. That was before you started, like, the Trump rebrand. Yeah, well, Silver Spoon was out. Silver Spoon was Trump. out, yep. So Silver Spoon that's was true, out. That's true, that's true. It was out. Um, but Vanilla Ice and me have great music together still. We did a Ride to Horse since then, 8 million views. We did a song called Rodeo. Me and him did a song with Kodak Black. Um, he's not political rapper by what some means, you know what I'm saying? I respect Who, Kodak? That. No, Vanilla Ice. Kodak oh, oh. rocks MAGA like crazy. Oh, yeah. But I respect, see, I, the difference between the left and the right, to me, is like, you could not like Trump and I could still be your friend. I lost tons of friends. People didn't like me anymore because I like Trump or this and that. Like, just because you don't like Trump, I mean, we can't be friends. Mm-hmm. I can still help you. I can still see your grandma across the street, help her across the street because mm-hmm. you don't like Trump. That's not a problem to me. I can still lend you a couple hundred dollars or pick you up. You need a ride somewhere. Right. But what was to me, people just get the animosity and that hate with me. Like, oh, he's got it easy. Oh, he don't have to work for nothing. Like, man, I'm busting my ass for what I got. I earned every accolade I got because you know what? When they think you had it easy, they don't want to give you the trophy. They don't want to, you got to take it. Right. So I got to do double the work. Mm-hmm. I got to outwork everybody. And then I went left field and built my own genre. I said, okay, cool. I've always liked to go against the grain, mm-hmm. right? Because there's no traffic. When you go the wrong way, there's no traffic. <laughs> it's going to be bumpy a little bit, but ain't nobody, you know what I mean? Everybody's going the other way. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to go way over here and do my own thing. Then I see everybody copying me and do what they do. It's cool. I don't got to get the credits, but I know what I done did. I know the time I put in, the chances I take. I just believe if you put effort into anything, you'll be able to get it. So to yeah, round man. it up, so to round it up, so the Vanilla Ice thing was cool. Um, Vanilla Ice is a super cool dude, super humble. Vanilla Ice did more for me probably besides myself than anybody in my rap career. Um, like just gave me opportunity. He's never said like, here's a bag of money. You know what I mean? Or like do this. But the opportunity he's gave me is priceless. And anybody who I've worked with has just always gave me opportunity. People are afraid of opportunity. They want the money now. Mm-hmm. Let me get that opportunity and watch how much money I make with the opportunity. Yeah. They, does, they Kodak do, that, does Kodak do a lot of like MAGA raps? Does he make a lot of songs about Trump? No, I don't think. I think he would of like he saw the lane that was popping. But Kodak Black's already Kodak Black and he's popping. Yeah. But like every single right. day he's. Magan on the internet. You think if you were like Kodak Black's level, if you were as famous as he was or as popular as he was, as he is right now, you would still be rocking Trump all that day. hard? All day. I'm really? Repping, all day I'm repping Trump. When Trump lost, they was like, what y'all gonna do? <laughs> what y'all gonna do? Mm. It's a rap. Yeah. I'm, my career, I got more plays, more, I'm bigger. Because it seems like a smart move. Like it seems like what you did was a smart move. Like you, it you was an honest move. You basically like, like one of the most hardcore groups of people in the country right now are like the hardcore Trump supporters. So if you're one of the only rappers or the only musicians who are like representing the, that group of people, you're going to automatically gain this massive audience. Not, so it seems like a genius marketing A plan. little bit because when I did it, those people didn't have the balls they have right now either. I was out here by myself with a few types of people around the world doing it. That crowd wasn't there yet. Once people are starting to see mm. what, okay, he's doing it, I'm going to do it too. Or, you know what, he's going to say his opinion, I'm going to say my opinion too. Mm-hmm. It takes one person to jump mm-hmm. straight out. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. when I jump straight out, then other people start being like, you know what, I get 10 DMs like, oh, you saw if you pussy, da, 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 da. Then the third DM, hey, bro, I respect what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, my job would never let me do something like this. Or, you know, my family or my wife thinks different. And then sooner or later they're like, that same person a year later is like, man, I'm putting a Trump flag on my car. I don't care what nobody says. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to open the door a little bit for people to get in. Trump is so busy doing Trump. He doesn't have time to this for the local person. That's what I try to say. People to come to my videos and stuff. These are local people. Why these are think, everyday Trumpers. Why do you think these people are so, so bought into Trump? Why do, why do people love Trump so much, do you think? Because First it feels off, like he's the most loved most and loved. the most hated. Definitely most loved, most hated. Um, I feel like people love Trump because they feel deep down that he's super brutally honest. Um, he has nothing to gain from somebody, so he just tell you exactly how he's a straight shooter. That's why I was so worried when I went to meet Trump, how that relate, how that thing was going to go. I think he might have, like, roasted you or something? I, and be like, who the real. fuck's this tattooed up, crazy-looking motherfucker? Yeah, yeah. like, I, you just didn't know what it was going to be because I done put in a lot of work. 
I done took a lot of risks. I didn't spend yeah. a lot of money. Even though I might have made some money, I spent a lot of money. Like I probably spent my truck alone's a hundred bands for Trump. You know what I mean? I probably spent a quarter million dollars on Trump. These videos, Trump ain't paying for them. He's not paying for the studio time. He's not paying for, you know, me to get out here and push my hats and push my stuff. He's not paying for that. So when I went to meet Trump for the first time, actually, like, he done tweeted some stuff and showed some love through the campaign. Like, Trump just sent me a personalized letter a couple months ago thanking me again for everything I did for him, mm -hmm. which is crazy. And my boy Stoney, who's here right now with me, when I went to meet Trump, he was with me, and it was Stoney's birthday. And I remember, like, Secret Service, they're real big on, like, you know, they think they run the show. Oh, yeah. Like, they're in charge. Mm -hmm. So I had this little um, photo book, you know what I'm saying, of, like, everything that I did for Trump, you know, the trucks, the billboards, all the, you know, the tattoo on my leg, you know what I'm saying, all a bunch of stuff in there. And um, they were like, you can't bring that in there when you talk to Trump. And I'm like, why? They're like, can't bring, can't, can't even give them your pen to sign something because you could poison the pen. You know, mm. they, you, they're very, oh, yeah, yeah. They're, so serious, they're yeah. very serious around Trump. I mean, we, you know, president of the United States at the time. Yeah. What was no, the event you were at? You met him at. So it was at a Sarasota rally, okay. and I mm. helped with a lot. They had put my truck inside. So even like right now, when Trump has a rally, I called our campaign managers, and they say, "Blow, okay, cool. I got my seat in the front. They got my truck in there the night before." Like Trump shows a lot of love to me. He doesn't have to do that, but yeah. it's like sh lets the people know that I rock with Blow. Yeah. I know he had a uh, he had a some sort of a fundraiser in Bel Air, like when he was when he was still president, and I remember he he was going to land his helicopter on the golf course, but they wouldn't let him because they were afraid somebody was going to like shoot a rocket launcher at it or something. So he actually had to drive his, they actually had to drive him all the way from fucking Tampa mm -hmm. to the, to the golf course. And it was at the Pelican. And uh, I know a guy who's a member of that and he went to it and he said it was like, he was charging something crazy, like 50 grand for a handshake. Uh, well, for, hey, if you could get all, it, get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you could get it, get it. And but economy, all these people were there paying yeah. for it though. If you could get it, get it. So, Quick, I was saying, so when I went in to meet Trump, as soon as I got in, bam, he knew what time it was. You see, appreciate all the work he did for me. You know what I mean? I said, I got a little book. I want you to sign some stuff, show you some stuff. And the people said, we already said you couldn't do that. And Trump looked at him and goes, where's the book at? So Stoney, who's over here in the cut, he was outside with the book waiting on me, right? And he, yeah. he came in, and he's a MAGA rapper, and he wasn't like, you know, it's my brother. He wasn't hating on me like, he wants to meet Trump. And I wasn't hating either. So when he came in, Trump saw him and said, I like that merchandise. I like that shirt. Where'd you get that shirt from? It said Trump, and it had the goat on it. And he goes, that's Blow's merch. So Trump said, get up here and take a picture with me ASAP in that shirt, because I love that shirt. And they <laughs> said, y'all get Blow, uh, Forgiato's information. They call it Blow Forgiato. Get Forgiato's information, and I need you to send me these shirts. So the next day, I, over to Bed Minister, I sent him some CDs, medallions, teach all my stuff. I sent him a big merch pack. Like I said, President Trump, mm. I'm going to send him everything I got. You Hell know what I'm saying? Yeah. I put some crazy stuff together. I sent him like 20 hats, all my merchandise. And then, like, two weeks later, I got a personalized letter back from him. You know what I mean? So if somebody's rocking with you, it's like, thanks for the merch, keep it moving. They're not going to say, yo, send that kid a letter. Right. At the end of the day, Trump sees, like, if you're a Republican and you out here doing your thing and you're a Trump supporter, that's amazing. But most of the people at that time were voting for Trump were already voting for Trump. The stuff they're sharing is going to Trump supporters already. <sighs> Here's somebody like me, Bryson Gray, J360, Stoney Dubro. Our followers are not voting for Trump. And we're red pilling people with our music. I'm red pilling people with my events. What do you mean by that? Making them Trump support a red pill. You know, on the red side. You know converting them to Trump. Yeah, Republican re converting. Them. I mean, a lot of people. It's not. But it's like, not really Republican. No, because I say that. So like, well, a lot of people term Republican that like Trump. But I was like on our rap. We only have someone to talk about, so we take shots at Democrats and this and that. But Democrats for Trump helped Trump in 2016 win the election. You know what I mean? If Trump wins in 2024, which he's gonna win. Democrats are going to have a big part of it because the Democrats that voted for Joe Biden, they're not all going to switch over to Republican. They're just going to vote Republican. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. what they're going to do. So um, 2016 had a lot to do with the Republican Party. I mean, the Democratic Party helping Trump win. But I'm just saying, so we do events. When people come out to our events, they're like, wow, this is cool. I mean, my camera crew, they're African-American. You know what I'm saying? They come out to the events. It's really no, They're like... At first, they're looking like, okay, like, you know, this is starting to get crazy. You know, I'm doing rallies. My first rallies were like 200 people. Next thing you know, I'm throwing one in Miami. 20,000 people are there. So my team and everybody's like, oh, you know what I mean? This is getting crazy. And then they would come out there and people would say like, hey, what's up? They would say their name to them. They'd be like, how do you remember my name? Well, I met you last week with Blue. Like, they realized that people genuinely cared about them, you know, and it was like a really good vibe. And they're all like, 
You know what I mean? It made them realize, man, ain't nobody ever gave me a hug and say they love me in 20 years. You know, that's crazy. I, lo I love this. I love this. I love being around this. I love seeing this. So sometimes you just got to get out there and be around firsthand and see, like, you know, mm -hmm. the energy. Like, if I brought my Trump truck to a BLM rally, I guarantee as soon as I pull in, it's going down. <laughs> yeah. It's going down. Yeah. Right? Which is cool, but it's going down. So when we're in D.C. There's no more BLM rallies, are there? I don't think so. But no, I'm saying, like, when we're in D.C., people <clears throat> like me and Bryson Gray, when we're making this music for everybody, everybody's love it. And Tifa got us on their hit list, publicized hit lists. Like, you see Forge Out or Bryson Gray, you take them out. And we still in D.C. popping out. We ain't got no... Imagine if I had a hit list of people when I'm riding around with my yeah, hit list. Like, yeah, I'm going to jail. Crazy, man. So it's like, we go through a lot. Not to mention, they say, oh, you're grifting. This is a grift, right? You guys are just making money off that red hat. and the 2016, nobody was doing it. This is the place I could get a cosign from you that wasn't a grift. I was the only person doing it. There was not making no money. Mm -hmm. I wasn't getting no money. I wasn't getting book shows off it. And if Trump would have lost, like they say he did, why do we stop if it's just about a grift? Do you think you'll ever run for office? Mayor, definitely. When I'm You'd 40. run for mayor? Yep. What about governor? Maybe that'd be in my <clears> 50s. <throat> you know, my biggest thing is like if I'm going to put my mind to, do, to it, I'm going to do it. Like right now, I work with some campaigns. You know, Christine Quinn, she's running for U.S. Congress here in the 13th District. I'm backing her. Christine Quinn. Christine Quinn. Christine Quinn. I'm going for even, her. She's a Republican. Her. If you're going out here, make sure you vote for Christine Quinn, District 13. My thing is, you know, I can't be, you know, when I'm 40, that's like when I'm done with like the regular rap music and everything. I'm not going to be pushing my rap CDs when I'm 40. It's a great time for me when Trump will win 2024. That will give me where I, about, about time I'm 40. How old are you now? 37. 37, okay. So, so I got years. three years, you know what I'm saying? Which, not putting the end of my music, but it's like I've lived every single day, the first 10 years of my rap, my rap career, rapping, like every day. Studio, how am I going to make it? Then 2016 on, it was like, how am I going to help Trump? Like, I, I don't have fun. I don't do family events. I don't go out and spend time. Like, my life has been consistent in rap music and trying to blow. So How you, am I going to make it? When am I going to make it? You enjoy the politics more than you enjoy the music? Yeah. Well, I enjoy the people more than I enjoy the music. So, like, I like getting into, like, you know, no vaccine, this and that. And I like to see, like, I go to a place and there's 500 people out there with me saying, yeah, I'm with you, bro. Like, yeah. I like the family side of it. Like, MAGA's family to me. It's been a lot of people hit me up. And, um, you know, I might sell my merchandise. I might pull up with my merchandise one day and say, look, here's 100 free hats. Let's go. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just how I feel that day, what I'm doing. What do you think makes those people the way that, like, what what is it about the I think MAGA being, people? Like, I think why being, do they? I think being, I already I cut you off, but I think it's being involved with something that they're accepted in. I feel like these people that are here, they're tired of the bullshit, yeah, but it's like, it's a family vibe. Yeah. I feel like some of these people are just like lost souls are left to do whatever sometimes. Cause it's not just like rich, wealthy people at these events. Right. There's people that literally go to a Trump rally a week before and sleep outside front row Joe's for a five days straight to get in. Then somebody like forge out a blow walks up, calls somebody and my seats right in front of their seat. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? These guys are out here sleeping. Like I respect that. When these rallies go on at most of these events, like CPAC and all these places, all your rappers are inside flicking it up. I'm across the street with the Patriots outside with my Trump truck, waving uh -huh. flags and out there doing my thing, holding the people down because that's who I'm with. I'm with the people. The people made me. The people shared my music. People bought my music. The politicians didn't. Uh -huh. These people helped me. These people believed in me. These people didn't judge me. So you're, you would say like your goal is to convert as many people as possible in, in America to the like MAGA ideology or way of thinking um in some ways in some ways yeah i mean that's it's not my everyday goal my Don't goal you think is like, just like sorry, go ahead. my goal is just to do me like you know nobody tells me what to do i do what i want to do trump doesn't give me like a checklist of things i need to go do mm -hmm. ronda sanchez i got a huge trail with ronda sanchez i just saw him at frenchies in clearwater beach did you really yeah like you when know was I, that? I got a picture um mm -hmm. well, a week ago he was doing the event i pulled up my trump truck on my trailer like these dudes show me love, you know what I'm saying? It's not like they're like, yo, blow, what's up? Let's hit the cookout. But they're like, blow, I love the trail. I love what you're doing. Thank you. He's gangster because he's like, he. it seems like he does what he wants to do. He doesn't mm -hmm. like really like, he's not like a fucking Rick Scott. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Fucking. Well, a big thing is too, he's got a look. So like, I got tons of love for the Santas. 
I hope DeSantis will be a great president one day. I, you know, he needs to wait. The Trump gets four more years, then we get eight years of DeSantis. A lot of people like them on the same ticket, but they're both Florida residents, so they can't run together. A lot of people don't know that. Can't run, but... You think Trump yeah, will be a better president that. than DeSantis? Yeah, but I think Why? DeSantis... Because I... Trump... <clears throat> Trump's Trump. DeSantis is still becoming who he is. Like, you got to, that's what I was trying to say a minute ago. DeSantis, COVID made him famous. Yeah, but DeSantis is a veteran. Trump's a, he dodged the draft. Man, Trump's a hustler. He's a draft dodger. Uh, <laughs> nobody, like, were you He's there? Were, were you, life, but though. I'm saying, were you there when he actually did the drafting and dodged no. it? No. Hmm. So, like, I'm a spoiled rich kid from St. Pete, but yeah. I'm really not. Right. But people are going to say what they want to say. Yeah. Trump, self made, he got millions of dollars from his family. Well, let me give you a million dollars, see what you do with it. Right. Let me see how much you come back with. Yeah, he definitely. No, I you watched. Know what his, I mean? Have you seen it? So, have you seen his documentary on, yeah, Netflix? on Netflix? Even though they kind of shit on him, they kind of like. Pay, but at they're the always going to shit on all but of us. It's still what he fucking did was amazing. So my thing is with the Sanchez, he got famous during COVID. He was a great governor, mm -hmm. but standing up for COVID, you know what I mean, made him yeah. real big. Well, who was behind him had his back the whole way? Trump. Mm -hmm. Trump kind of shit so, on him towards the end. Mm, Trump so was kind of like, they were asking if him about So if Joe Biden him. was in there right now, and with the way he feels about it, I don't see the governor going super hard. Now, DeSantis has really turned it on because he knows that he became who he became. Right. I'm not taking nothing from DeSantis. I love DeSantis. But I'm trying to say is Trump had a lot to do with that help of DeSantis becoming DeSantis. Sure, I sure. I think DeSantis might be... After Trump, maybe the greatest president that we're going to have coming up. Mm -hmm. But you got to give Trump his four more years. You know what I mean? Trump got, he really got stripped of these four, right? Yeah. So you need to let Trump get in there. And I feel like DeSantis, I don't want to lose him in Florida. Yeah. I don't want DeSantis to go nowhere. Yeah. This is why they're all moving here. They know Florida's strong. Yeah. So all these people are like, oh, they're moving to Florida because Florida's great. They're moving to Florida to pull off the big scam again. Mm -hmm. I think the one thing Trump has that DeSantis doesn't have, DeSantis has got, like, the looks. He's got everything. He's got, like, the look. He's got the persona. He's got the confidence. He's got, I think he's got everything it takes to be a good president. I mean, he's like, if you think of, like, who you want to represent the country, right? Mm -hmm. First of all, you think as far as just, like, being articulate and, like, like carrying yourself well and look, you think, like, Obama. Like, that. that's the guy that well. you would originally like i'm saying like put away all <laughs> everything obviously Hell no. obama did a lot of fucked up shit like tons he, tons of fucked up shit trump did more for the african-americans but obama he was a, did. he was a super good like speaker great carried speaker. himself well as joe Biden would and say he's, he's like, the cleanest black man ever right that's about yeah. racist as it gets did he really say that yeah <laughs> but then desantis is kind of similar to that desantis is a fucking great talker he's young but Trump's got the thing. The thing I think Trump has is he's Trump's a maverick, bro. He's super smart, and I think he's really good at dealing with people. And he got the ace. He's that really trumps good. Everything. No one's ever dealt with more people. Like no one. Like first president to ever meet Kim Jong Un. That was crazy. Now yeah. they, a president. That's why I rock with Trump. My boy went all the way over there. Someone just could have got banged. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Could have went over there and just like yeah. Boom! Like you're dumb. You got off this plane. That was gangster. gangster. That was gangster. But what yeah. I say is like. DeSantis says we can't use all of our eggs one time. But don't you think he's I, our next card? I what think I'm getting at is like, don't you think that the polar, like, how do you d bridge the gap with the polarization? Like he fucking he well, he one thing I will say, more than you say a bridge in the gap. Trump, yeah. That gap's back because the media tears you apart like for Trump. sure. So the media has made this huge gap in the Trump. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's closing because they're seeing nothing's doing yet. Now DeSantis. He's did a really good job, I would say, like here you got whites and blacks like DeSantis. Democrats and Republicans like DeSantis. You know what I mean? A lot mm -hmm. of people don't really know too much. I remember the first time I met DeSantis, I was still on my way. Like, where's Trump? And he walked, I, I was going to take a picture of him all, and I was just like, you know, mm -hmm. where's Trump? You know what I'm saying? Right, right. But then I really looked back, and I was like, damn, that was DeSantis. I messed up. Because, <laughs> like, I, you know what I mean? Because I was just coming in the game. I was just learning. Mm -hmm. This is maybe, like, you know, two and a half years ago. I was just more focused on MAGA and Trump. It was bigger. Right. You know, and then I realized, like, okay, well, DeSantis is a big part, and he's yeah. doing a lot of good things, mm -hmm. putting on for our home here in Florida. And I like that he stood up towards a lot of things. So I just went and did some big stuff for DeSantis. I made a song called Hey Disney. I sampled Pink Floyd. They sued me. They pedos. Did they really? Yeah, they gave me a copyright and everything within a week, which is crazy. Because did they give you a cease and desist first? They no, sued you. No, just straight sued me. Uh, Damn. Roger Walters or Water or whatever it yeah. is. So I put on TikTok. I started doing millions of views. and Everybody kept tagging them on the left. So <laughs> like I went to Disney, right? Because I was supporting Trump on the Don't Say Gay Act, right? Mm -hmm. So like my biggest thing is I ain't a gay hater. You know what I mean? 
if you're going to be gay, you can just be gay. You don't need to like have a big sign that says, I'm gay, and I need to give you extra attention. If you're white, you don't need a big sign that says, I'm white privilege or black. I'm black. I need privileges. You know what I mean? We're all equal. All lives matter to me. So when I went there, it's disgusting to me. Like right now, if I got off this, out of here, school bus gets out, right? And us three walk up to a seven, eight-year-old and say, y'all masturbate today? <laughs> What's going to happen? I'm going to get some shit. Yeah. They're allowed to do that in school? These these teachers in first, second, and third grade want to be able to have transvestites come in, uh, dress uh, cross dressers come in and perform and talk to the kids. They want to add this stories like this to the school books and curriculum. Let a parent discuss to their children what that is. That's a parent's job to do, and it might not be in Wait, first or second or third grade. If they masturbated, yeah, that's a new thing. They got a new thing coming out where really? they're going to ask students to masturbate three to five t- times a what? week because it's going to help the stress. You got to find this. The stress levels. They got all types of stuff. Where did going you see on. this? It's on the news, on TV. You can read about it. It's everywhere. You got to find this shit, Austin. The, I got to the, see this. Their biggest thing is, you know, their sex ed. They're starting real young and trying to tell kids that it's okay. But the difference is, if me and you were two boys sitting at home in first, second, or third grade, and Aladdin comes on and the boys are making out. If the what comes on? Aladdin comes on and two boys are making out. Well, two boys in first, second, and third grade just might kiss because they think, well, Mm -hmm. I saw it on the TV. So I guess that's what's supposed to go on. That's not supposed to go on. That teacher, whoever it is in the movie, has no right to teach the children that. Right. right? They have no right. The parent has the right at the end of the day. And if the parent doesn't do their job, then that's on the parent with their kids. Mm -hmm. Or at least let them get to high school. Like, first, second grade shouldn't be talking about what's trans and what's gay. So I went out there. We did the big pedal world. I did a huge video at SeaWorld uh, outside of Disney there. (laughs) I had about... um, Times Union. I had about 500 people show up out there, and it was crazy. And within a week, Pink Floyd stripped my video. The request inquires about any requirements for health and physical education instructors to define very specific sex acts, including masturbation, masturbation, vaginal sex, oral sex, and anal sex. What is that? I don't know what the fuck this is in reference to. The parents' union? There's a parents' union. Well, so pretty much what it is. Okay, mystery group seeks all the sex education details from local scoops. An anti-LGBTQ law. So what (laughs) they call it an anti-LGBTQ. DeSantis, what he did is he passed his law saying that, you know, he's not banning gays, but he's banned, you know, to say, talking about being gay in first, second, or third grade. Nothing wrong with that. And the left's fighting back on him saying that's wrong. That these kids, you know, I've seen videos that, uh, like, you know, Instagram of a woman having a newborn baby, male, and saying, this is my son, and he's going to be gay, and he's going to be great. And then she stops and goes, you got a problem with that? And I'm looking like, yeah, I'm thinking to myself, I got a big problem with that. But the way she was doing it, she says, well, you guys hold your little daughter and say, oh, she's beautiful. Have to lock her up when she's 16 because she's going to break somebody's heart. Or this kid's going to be a cutie. He's going to have all the girls. So what's wrong with me with my baby already saying that he's going to be gay? Mm. There's a lot wrong with that. Mm-hmm. A lot wrong with that, putting that onto a child like that, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Yeah, so I sure. just came out with that, and Pink Floyd sued me. And um, <laughs> Which is crazy is the beat was sampled, and uh, they had all rights to take the video down. So then I redid a whole new beat, put the audio to it, and they still copywrote me, which is crazy. Is this on YouTube? Yeah, I own the song. You don't make the words. You know what I'm saying? They're my yeah, words, right. my new beat. But right. that's a problem with being independent. I've got a number that's like, yeah, I'll talk to YouTube, please. Right now, I can't even get a hold of YouTube. Even though I got my 100K subscriber plaque, it took years to get that from them people. They don't want me to have none of that stuff. Yeah, but at least YouTube hasn't banned you. Nope, but they demonetize a lot of stuff. So yeah, they say too. like, oh, you're making so much money on this topic. The video's out, but I'm not making no money because they demonetized it. Right. So, yeah, I'm rapping about no vaccines for money, but they can't make money on it because it's demonetized. What is this, Austin? What's the title of this article? And also, where did the don't say gay even come from? I don't even think that, does the bill even actually say the word? The, the, is it? Yeah, DeSantis has it in there. That he, much, he has it in there? Yeah, oh, okay. like the teachers can't talk about that type of stuff. Oh, okay. But they were outraged. And then they have the... Um, uh, so, like, we were at Disney. I'm not sure if you really paid attention, but there's a lot of stuff in these movies mm-hmm. that's cr- crazy. Like, I have some stuff I could probably take a picture and show you. Like, I got a picture, a screenshot of Toy Story, 
and why all the anim- uh, the characters are looking up, the shadow is like someone getting a blowjob. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but then again, say us three were creators of movies and drew stuff. We could be sitting around like, watch, we'll put this in here. No one's ever going to see this. I'm going to put a dick this. in this thing. <laughs> you know? But that's what they did. So I'm not really putting it a thousand percent on Disney. Yeah. But it's out. Mm-hmm. And it's to the kids. Right? And then this, you hear the stories of what goes on. Little Mermaid was taken down because it had dicks on the um, thing. I got a Mickey Mouse gift card that somebody showed me that the bottom of like Mickey Mouse's dress is just a dick and two balls. Mm-hmm. There's no legs on it. Just like two balls, a dick, mm-hmm. and then her. But this does facts. Yeah. Why are they fact checking that? So I stand with DeSantis on that. Don't, and I mean, a thousand percent everything DeSantis does. Another thing about Trump is, man, him. he was so good for business for like the media. For like everybody. the media made so much money All on business. him. Even even like small YouTubers who did political commentary. Like the, I know a guy. I know a couple of people who are like left wing YouTube commentators on politics. All they do is talk politics, and they were getting way more views, way more subscribers when they were basically just they weren't getting banned, watching though. every time Trump went live from the White House and talked. They just fucking pipe in the live stream into their live stream and have themselves in the corner. Just like every time Trump would say something, they would just make a comment on it. Or yeah, good talk or bad, it. but it was just Trump right. gave people opportunity to definitely make money. But are those people did they ever get demonetized or deplatformed? Um, Even if they were pro or not, did, Trump. Yeah. I'm just saying they did. Well, on Twitter, it, it not sucks. on YouTube. The de- you know that sucks. They demonetize and so the yeah, copyright I got from Pink Floyd was my first strike on my account. So, I mean, that was the first one that I got. And it did what it was doing. I mean, that's where Vice is with me. It got me to Vice right up. It made the Vice interview. Vice is coming back doing a video documentary on me for their YouTube channel like, really? in a week and that's a half. Cool. Oh, that's dope. I hit y'all up. Y'all can pull up with the cameras. You want to do some behind the Hell scenes yeah. or whatever? Yeah, man. Hell yeah. But um, my biggest thing is, like, not everyone's – just because someone is like Trump doesn't mean I can't do a podcast or I can't agree with them or I can't go out to lunch with them. That's what people get so big into. And that's but what it's Trump, the, it's Trump did. it's not the same on the other end, though. Like, if, if there's somebody who – just because you can say you can go hang out with anyone who's not a Trump supporter, someone who's not they a Trump can't. supporter, they won't go out and hang out with some oh, like man. hardcore MAGA person. I got the freaking Trump truck, and I mean, people lose their minds. <laughs> yeah, lose their minds, <laughs> lose their minds. Like you know what I mean? Like disgusted, lose their minds. Austin, yeah. pull up that truck. Can you pull up yeah. a picture? Up? Where can we find the a good picture? Of it? Just Google. Or just type in your Forge Auto, Forge blow, Auto truck. blow Truck. I got, Trump truck. I got me and Roger Stone on there from Patriot Suite video. Oh yeah, my God, is. that fucking video is absolutely bananas. Yeah. You got yeah, fucking Roger one. Stone. Go down to the right, right there. Go back. One more over. He's got Roger Stone crip right, walking in front of his left, truck. To the left, to the one left, more. Left, right there. Yeah, that's me and Roger Stone. My dog right there.